What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the second motorcycle build series ever on this channel. Uh, this is my new bike here. I just picked it up a couple days ago. It's a it's 1981 Suzuki GS850. Picked it up for 450 bucks. Pretty good deal. Um, it does not run right now. Nothing really works. I think it's going to need a new battery for one thing, and then I don't really know what else it needs. But uh, yeah, so that's what part one of the build series is about. Just finding out what it needs to get running and then getting it running. What's up guys, welcome back to the Gold Guy YouTube channel. Thank you for clicking on yet another, oh, excuse me. As you can see, I'm sitting here in front of my 1981 Suzuki GS850 Scrambler that I started building about two years ago. It's pretty much finished except for, as you can see, it has an oil leak and I'm sure a lot of you guys have noticed that in my other videos. And to be honest, I've been wanting to fix this for a long time, but I've been so busy with this thing and with the TS-185 and now the YZ450. I just have too much going on. and I need to finish one thing before I start another. So that's what I'm doing here with the GS850. It's time to replace the head gaskets. I pretty much have all the new gaskets for this engine. So I, kn I know for sure the head gaskets are leaking because I've seen oil coming out of there while riding it's been hitting my leg and stuff like that i know oil's coming out even if it's not just coming out of the head gasket i have all the other gaskets so i'm going to change the side case gaskets the oil pan gasket the uh, valve cover gasket pretty much all the gaskets are going to get changed in this video so i'm going to be facing my fears that's what i'm going to be doing because i <laughs> i've never taken apart an engine this big I've seen people do it with the engine on the bike. I'm gonna try to leave the engine on the bike at first, see if I can get the head off. I'm a little bit scared. I've been putting this off, but it's time to get done. First, you know, you guys know the drill. Every time I work on this bike, first things need to come off, gas tank and the seat. After that, carburetors and exhaust. After that, valve cover and head. It is 1.25 p.m. on a Sunday. Let's see how much I can get done today. Two minutes, seat is off. All right, gas tank should be free. Holy shit, this thing's got a lot of fuel in it. All right, five minutes. Gas tank and seat are off. I spilled a little bit of gas. I'm just gonna use that to clean off the engine. I wanna wipe the engine down real good before I start taking it apart. All right, next up, carburetors and exhaust. All right, there we go, carburetors are removed. Next, the exhaust header's gotta come off. And finally, we gotta remove this rear muffler bracket. Okay, there it is. There's the exhaust. And 15 minutes, I got the carburetors and the exhaust off. Okay. I guess next I should go with the valve cover. Moving right along. Oh, I gotta drain the oil, duh. Almost forgot. Pretty important step there. Now let me show you this oil leak I've been talking about. So you can see there's oil all over the frame. And it 
comes all the way down to the bottom of the oil pan and drips right there by the plug already got a drip on in the shop here let me show you this head gasket on this side it looks all right let's go to the other side though look in there that's where the leak is on that corner right under the exhaust port and on the lower head gasket too right in the middle trust me that's where it's leaking and it doesn't help that i uh was too cheap to buy the actual gasket and use former gasket on this case here and the valve cover here i've learned a lot since i uh put this engine together there can't be much oil left in this engine a lot of it leaks out definitely gonna fill up that bowl now it's time to remove the valve cover first these caps gotta come off so now we just gotta remove all of these bolts there's a lot of them and there's also this little breather vent thing up top we gotta pull that off first There's that. Definitely not an impact driver. I can already tell that these horns are gonna be away. In they're they're gonna be in the way. And right, where can I stuff this for now? That looks good. Uh, I just gotta break that seal somehow. Wonder if I can get leverage right. Oh, there it is. Popped right loose. Now we just gotta get it out of here. I remember how tough that was. Oh, actually, wasn't bad. But there it is. There's the valve cover. Now I just gotta clean all this goop off of it and replace it with the right gasket. Ah, uh, here she is. Good old climber manual. Step six is to remove the cam chain tensioner. First, we loosen this lock nut. And then we turn this lock screw clockwise until we lock the tensioner push rod. All right, there it is, it's locked. Now we can Pull this thing off. The next step is to remove this idler that's in between the two camshafts. Four bolts on each side, we'll pull this thing off. And there it is. There's the cam chain idler in one piece. And after step eight, which is the idler I just removed, we got step nine, which is remove the top of the cam, the bearings, holding the camshafts in place. A, B, C, and D. I'm gonna just go in order and start with A. Alright, there we go. There's A, bearing removed. And the journals look pretty good. No scarring, nothing out of the ordinary.
Alright, so now I guess we should be able to remove the camshafts. Start with the rear one. The intake, that was easy. Okay, there's the uh, intake camshaft. Only four lobes, four valves, one per cylinder. I remember these were a little bit beat up. The lobes were beat up when I uh, was first adjusting the valve. So nothing new there. The center of the lobe is still good and smooth. So it's not ideal, but it, it'll work. Cylinder head removal right here. First, remove camshafts and then disconnect tachometer drive cable. I don't even have that anymore. Uh, remove the exhaust system, already done. Now we use a small screwdriver, gently pry up on the cam chain guide. This one right here. Alright, there's the cam chain guide. Always makes me feel good to keep a nice neat pile of all my parts. Next, remove, pretty much remove all the bolts for the head. First these two bolts on this each side. Well, I guess I still can sneak a socket in there. Sneaky socketing. There's one side. And there's the other side. And there's one bolt on the front holding the head to the cylinder. That needs to come off next. There it is. Now all these damn acorn nuts. And there's some studs with nuts in there on each side. There's actually 12 heads or 12 nuts holding the head on. And this shows the order in which they should be removed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just like a dance move, you guys get it. I got all the nuts off except for two. The studs came out on those, which is fine. Sometimes you get the nut, sometimes you get the stud. And I use the magnetic tool to get the nuts out of the head. I uh, didn't film it, just charging up the camera. Now it's time to remove the head. That was a whole freaking fiasco, getting that cylinder back back on, getting all the pistons in. It's going to be really hard when I have to do it for real, but I've got the cylinder seated, so now we got to try to pull just the head off. Okay, got the head starting to come off. There it is, the head separated. So now I gotta cut the zip tie, get the cam chain out of the way, and I should be able to pull the head. Okay, there it is. I just gotta get it out of here somehow. That's a tight squeeze, but there I got it. Let's inspect the head. So as you can see, this is the side of the engine that wasn't leaking. This is the side that was leaking oil right around here, or actually on this side. And you can see it gets progressively more black. And that's from the oil burning in there and causing a lot more carbon buildup than these cylinders have. So yeah. Oil is definitely getting in there. But we don't have any stuck valves. Looks like all the valves are seated pretty well. So nothing too weird going on with the head. Pretty good. I mean, the engine was running good. It had good compression, and that's why 
I'm not gonna bother replacing the uh, piston rings. Again, there's more evidence of the oil leak. Oil was just seeping out onto the cylinder and burning up, causing a lot of smoke and a lot of oil leaks on the f all over the floor. All right, there we go, whole top end is disassembled. So now I just got a lot of cleanup to do. Pull these old gaskets off. We'll be good to go. Yeah, that was easy. So this one actually doesn't seem bad. And there's no obvious rips in it, but the oil was kind of just seeping out like through the gasket. It was weird. And yes, I did try torquing the bolts all the nuts, head nuts down, and it still leaked oil. This bottom gasket is definitely going to be tricky to remove. This one's dried up pretty good too. Once gaskets lose that flexibility, they leak. Got to get these holes nice and plugged up. I don't want anything falling down in the crankcase. That'd be bad. So the pistons look good. The top, pretty carbon carboned up I expected that that's what the valves look like but the uh, main important part is that there's not much blow by going on past the piston rings you can usually tell by the carbon buildup if it's getting past the piston rings now this motor had good compression and I don't see anything going past the rings and also there's not really any scarring on the skirts of the pistons Everything looks good here. So now I just gotta go through and clean off all this old gasket. This head is aluminum, so I'm gonna have to be really careful not to scra scratch it at all, scrape it, anything like that. I've got this plastic scraper. Gonna see if I can get anything off with that before I try the little knife scraper. Yeah, this plastic John ain't working. This gasket is stuck on there so good. This is what I was expecting. Gaskets like this just don't seal. Just don't seal right. And I think the reason why is because the guy I bought the bike from let the engine sit for like 12 years inside with oil in the engine, uh, which starts to break down the gaskets over time after it isn't ran for 12 years. And then you have oil leaks when you get the bike running again. I'm going to stop using the razor blades because this is soft aluminum. I don't want to scratch it. I've been watching some videos and people say this is not a good solution. So I'm going to have to find some other way to get this gasket off. Guess I'm going to watch some more YouTube videos. After doing a little bit of research online, there's only one thing that I have here in the shop that I've heard helps with getting these old gaskets off. And that is the good old aircraft remover. So let's get a little bit of this on there and see if it'll do anything to the gasket. All right, I'm gonna let that sit on there for a while, go eat some lunch, and we'll see if that stuff actually does anything to the gasket. It's been like half an hour and the aircraft remover did basically nothing it might have softened the gasket paper up just a little bit but I mean it really didn't help me out too much I just decided to stop the video there the razor blade was not working and I didn't know any other solutions as to how to get that head gasket off I did some research and I found out that a lot of people like these 3m Rolock bristle discs for removing the gaskets I bought one with good old Amazon Prime and it should get here in a couple days so in those couple days I'll finish up this uh, gasket replacement get the engine back together and hopefully get this bike on the road real quick so thank you guys for watching if you haven't already please subscribe so you can make sure to see the next video like the video comment down below and I'll see you guys next time peace out